Today we're going to cover a five minute demo in ArcGIS Monitor to get you familiar with the user interface and some of the key tabs. We'll start by logging in as the site user and the first tab you will see is the status tab. This will give you a high level overview of all the currently alerting items and failure items and what collection those items are part of. Here we notice there's one alert condition in the infrastructure section. If we click on the alerts tab, we can get details on the alerting condition. Here we see that it was a warning level alert in the system category. The alert time started at 2.35 p.m. and has been alerting for 0.2 hours. An email notification was sent to the administrator alerting of that condition and here we have information that it's a production environment with available memory less than 3 gigabytes. The note indicates that the machine is low on memory. The administrator hopefully will follow up on the email to investigate why memory is running low at this time. We can click on the failures tab to see if there's any monitoring failures. Fortunately, there's zero failed items at this time. Next, we can click on the availability tab. This will provide a coverage and availability percent statistic that will allow us to monitor the availability of critical items in our infrastructure. Here we see that the development, production, and test environments have been 100% available for the time range today. Next, we can look at the alerts tab and look at alerts for different time periods where they have occurred. Here we see there was an alert occurring today, and if we look at other time periods, we can see alerts that happened historically and whether they are still open or not. Next we have the Categories drop-down. This has a series of pre-built reports for different counter type categories such as Web, ArcGIS, Database, Infrastructure, Usage, GeoInfo, User Defined extensions, and License extension. With the core counters, you can expect data to be populated in the Web, ArcGIS, Database, and Infrastructure section. Some of the other reports require extensions to be configured from the ArcGIS Monitor Gallery. You can start by looking at the Web report, and here it nicely groups all of the HTTP items together, and we can look at a chart of all the URLs that are currently being monitored. Here we have a secure Sample World Cities URL and a public Sample World Cities URL. And we can look at the response times and statistics. We can also explore for other environments what the response code or response time is. We go to the ArcGIS category. This will contain items on our ArcGIS server and portal items. And we can expand the tree to look at any uh, statistics that we're interested in, such as throughput um, or portal content items. Next, we can look at the database category. And this will put together all of the database counters we have. Currently, there's a load test count. And here we can monitor the statistics over time. If you have other queries, um, for SDE databases or Oracle or SQL Server, um, they would appear here under the database category. Next we'll take a look at the infrastructure category, and here is one where we had an alert condition. The infrastructure will include system, process, and RDP metrics, as well as Amazon counters. And here we can see that the alert for available memory is defined here and we can look at different time periods where that occurred. You can see here the alert started at 2.35 p.m. and the alert condition for the low memory is continuing. That production server has under 3 gigabytes and uh, fortunately the administrator received an email and I'm sure is diligently following up on that alert item. Next we'll go to the site catalog and this will provide a tree structure where we can expand to different levels of detail to look at items of interest. Here I've expanded the ArcGIS Server tab and I can look at the services information, capabilities, pooling information, usage, errors, site information, and other information about that site. I can also drill down and look at individual charts or statistics 
for different time periods. Next we'll go to the Reports tab. This allows us to configure an Excel report for a specified time range that we're interested in looking at statistics and alerts for. Once we have that configured, we'll click the Execute tab and then click Execute and this will generate an Excel report that we can further analyze to look at trends, alerts, and errors over the time period. Thanks for watching.